Our next speaker is highly educated and he was working as a hedge fund manager and he started a very small project to help his niece learn um, math. And that project, I'll let him tell you about it, has blossomed into a revolutionary worldwide educational movement. Our next speaker is Sal Khan. So before I get started, how many of y'all have, have been to the Khan Academy? We have family members on it, or just have a okay? It's good. It's good. Good. So, 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 so there'll be new, some some newbies here today. So so it's most known for a collection of videos that, as was just introduced, I started for my cousins, and I'll go into a little bit more depth there. But we're we're doing much more. Our mission is actually a world class education for anyone anywhere, and, and I'll talk more about that. But just so we're all on the same page, let me show y'all a quick montage of what the Khan Academy videos feel like. We could integrate over the surface, and the notation usually is a capital sigma. All of these interactions are just due to the gravity over interstellar, or almost you could call it intergalactic. So the right slot is I plus 1. This animal's fossils are only found in this area of South America, a nice clean band here. They create the Committee of Public Safety, which sounds like a very nice committee. Notice this is an aldehyde. And it's an alcohol. It's some type of an infectious disease. Exactly. So the key is when you start to look at data, you have to look at all aspects of it. Ours is their 30 million plus the 20 million dollars from the American manufacturer. If this does not blow your mind, then you have no emotion. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm glad y'all enjoyed Euler's identity. Uh, now, fast forward. To, uh, these, these are actually our, our, our stats as of like like yesterday. Uh, we, we've delivered over 80 million uh, lessons. Uh, right now, I'm I'm the the faculty of the Khan Academy. Uh, it's, although that's expanding soon, and we can cover that in the Q and A session. Uh, we've had 100 million exercises done, and you haven't seen what an exercise looks like. But we actually have a way for students to learn at their own pace, and. Maybe the neatest stat is uh, monthly now we're at three and a half million unique users per month. And uh, whenever, you know, in the internet world, we're used to reading, oh, a million here, a million there, 10 million, 20 million, you get kind of numb to that. But just to give a point of view of what that is, that's more than six times the total number of students that Harvard has graduated since 1636. And we're growing about threefold a year. So th there, there is an opportunity for scale here. Um, the, 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 yeah, and, and there's a lot more of, of what we're up to, but, but I want to rewind back to how all of this really got started. I, it was in uh, 2004, I, as was introduced, I was working at a hedge fund, and a cousin was having trouble at Matt. She was visiting me in Boston from New Orleans, and uh, she was very bright. When you talked to her, she was a really sharp girl, and wh when it came out that she was actually having trouble in her math class, I was like, hey, Nadia, how, you know, I have trouble believing this. You're obviously a bright girl. We share a certain amount of DNA. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> So, so how about when you, when you go back to New Orleans, which is where I grew up as well, and I was in Boston at the time, uh, we do some type of tutoring session over the phone or whatever it might be. And so she agreed and we started that up. And that started to work out well. I, I on the phone, we used Yahoo Doodle as a way to, to, to see each other's writing. And then uh, I started tutoring her brothers, a couple of more cousins, a couple more family friends. I still had my day job. And you fast forward to 2006 now, and I had this cohort of about 15 or so people around the country, actually there were two in Houston, that I was tutoring. I was kind of, you know, mostly, most of them were family members. And I was, I was having a chat with a friend over dinner, saying, you know, so I'm having a lot of fun, it's, it's giving me kind of a mission, uh, but it's, hard, it's, it's getting hard for me to scale. And he said, well, why don't you take some of your lectures and, and, and put them on YouTube? And I said, no, 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 YouTube's for cats playing piano, it's not for... <laughs> Serious mathematics, um, but but I I I, uh, I I went home that weekend. I got I got over the idea that it wasn't quite my idea, and uh, I, I and. And, 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 and I, I gave it a shot. And, and then a whole cascade of interesting things started to happen. I mean, you know, the first thing I, I told my cousins, hey, before we do our little tutorial session, I want you to watch these videos. Tell me what you think. And their very first feedback, it was somewhat backhanded, but profound at the same time. They told me that they preferred me on YouTube than in person. <laughs> they, 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 um, and, and it's, it seems counterintuitive. Uh, you know, everything we learn in life is that, okay, technology, maybe it's a, it's a cheaper and more efficient version, but it's never a, at least as good or, or better. But they were saying that they preferred an automated version of their cousin to their cousin. <laughs> and 
but when you, when you put yourself in their minds, it made a lot of sense. They could now pause and repeat. They could uh, engage in the content when they were ready for it. They, you know, who knows, maybe when our live sessions, Nadia, the boy that she was hoping would ask her to the prom, asked someone else. Her mind was, maybe I had a tough day at work. And, and, and probably the most important thing is, there's always embarrassment. I mean, we've all experienced it. Even at work, you know, you ask someone, how does this work? They come up to you and say, oh, it's real easy, blah, 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 blah. You get it? And you're just like, yeah, yeah, I get it, you know. And, you know. <laughs> and, then, and then you go on Wikipedia half the stuff that they said. And, 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 and I think that's happening, that was happening to my cousins. They didn't want to feel judged. And now they can go and review it and, 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 and look at exactly what their gaps were. So I put these videos out there. And then I started to see other people were watching, people that I was not related to. And uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was kind of a profound experience because most of the comments on YouTube aren't necessarily positive or G-rated, but, but these were, and, and these were like, thank you. And it's amazing how, how profound just an even uh, a simple thank you is. But then, but then I started getting letters from people, hey, this, is, this helped me pass algebra, or this is my, my son has, has a learning disability and this is the only thing that's getting through to him, or this is the reason why I'm able to go back to college. And uh, you know, you can imagine as an analyst as a hedge fund, it felt good to finally do something for society. <laughs> and, and so so I, 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 uh, I, I kept going. And you fast forward all the way to 2009, uh, the site traffic kept growing, and I frankly had trouble focusing on my day job. And you know, we looked at the finances, we're like, you know, hey, I, I think we can take, I could take a year off, we could live off of our savings. And I said, hopefully, and I set it up as a not-for-profit, and with the mind, hopefully someone realizes the social return on investment here, that these videos, not only will they be able to reach the students who are using them now, they could reach students who are using them uh, uh, 10 years, 20 years, even 100 years. I, you know, what, what I say is, Contrary to what maybe some publishers would have you believe, calculus does not change every five years. <laughs> and as I joke, if, if, if Euler or Newton or Leibniz had made videos on YouTube, I wouldn't have to. <laughs> you know, assuming something about their communication skills and all of that. But I, it, and so there's, there's a certain timelessness to this content. So I kept going, quit my job in 2009 hoping someone would notice. And like I think a lot of these entrepreneurial stories go, nine months into it, no one had noticed. Uh, there were a lot of people on the web who were using it, a lot of testimonials, but, but I, I, still living off of savings. And then I, I had a little, some people said, hey, they wanted to donate some money, why don't you put a PayPal link on your site? I put the PayPal link there. I was getting $20, $15 from random people around the world, which, which was nice in and of itself. But then all of a sudden I got a $10,000 donation. And uh, her name was Andor, and I, I immediately emailed her back. I said, thank you. Um, <laughs> if, if, uh, and I said, you know, if, if we were a physical school, you would now have a building named after you, uh, which is, uh, and, and she, uh, which is a very good deal. I don't know what, you know, these rice and all these guys charge for a building, but it's 10,000 <laughs> done by much these days. But, but then she said, well, she was local. She was in Palo Alto. We had moved our fund at this point, and, and I was now based in Palo Alto near, near San Francisco. And uh, she, she said, well, we should have lunch, you know. And, and over lunch, she's like, well, if this is the largest donation you've ever gotten, how are you supporting yourself? And in as kind of a proudful way as possible, I tried to say, well, I'm not, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> and so, uh, uh, I, you know, and she kind of nodded and she says, what's your vision? I said, well, it's not just videos, we're going to do exercises, this whole platform, kids learning at their own pace. And so when I, when I went home, I got a text message from Ann saying, well, I'm, I've just wired $100,000 to you. Uh, you, you have a salary now. Um, and, and so that, that was a good day. And so that was, that was, but um, the... Um, and th this was all very recent. This was like early last summer, 2010. And then the, it really started to snowball. July of, of 2010, uh, uh, and I got a text message from Anne. I was actually running a little summer camp for these middle school students. Um, I, had, I had six of them playing a game of risk, that you know, battle strategy game, and I had 20 of them trading securities based on the outcome of the game of risk. <laughs> Very good game. And. Uh, I got a text, another text message from Ann, and she says, I'm in front of, I'm, I'm at the Aspen Ideas Festival, it's a conference, there's hundreds of people in the room, Bill Gates is on stage right now, for the past five minutes he's been talking about you. And I was like, I didn't know Ann was such a prankster, I didn't know. <laughs> And, and then I, I, I looked on, on Twitter, I was like, wow, this, this, this is really happening. Like, people were tweeting about it, and Bill Gates' kids use this site, and Bill Gates uses it, and I didn't know what to do. I was like, what do I do? Do, do I call him? Do I, um, what's the next step? 
Uh, and, and so I, it was the next, honestly, the next week or two was like the most surreal, you know, here I was, I was literally in a closet recording math videos. I had heard this thing about Bill Gates. I wasn't sure if it really happened. It seemed very surreal and dreamlike. Didn't know how to proceed. Uh, then literally two weeks later, I get a call from Larry Cohen, who's Bill Gates' chief of staff, saying, well, you might have heard, Bill's a fan. He uses it at your site with his kids. He uses it himself, which made me want to redo some of the videos. But, but then he, um, I was like, I only thought Nadia was watching that one. I didn't, you know. Um, I would have been a little bit more respectful if it was missing. But, but uh, and, and so Larry's like, w w you know, uh, Bill would love to meet you if you have time. Um, I, I, was, I, I, I was looking at my calendar as he said this, and it was completely blank. And I, and I said, well, you know, let's try Wednesday at 2.45. I could just, I could just sneak him in there, you know, I have a couple other things to do, do some laundry. Um, and, and, and so, uh, he, uh, I, I met with him and, and uh, he said, how would you, how, you know, I'd like to support you. And I said, well, I'd like to continue doing this. We can translate this into other languages. And I want to make this a real virtual school, not just the instruction part, not just the videos. I want to have exercises. What I want to do is challenge the idea. In a traditional academic model, you fix the amount of time someone has to learn something and the variable is how well they actually learn it. I said, what, what if we had a reality where what we fix is that everyone masters a concept and the variable is how long it takes for someone to learn it. So that you build on a foundation, one piece after another, and we could build software to do that. So he, you know, he nodded and you know, there was like 10 people in the back of the room who quickly wrote stuff, wrote stuff down. <laughs> Um, and it was strange, because literally around the same point, it was completely unrelated, it seemed related, but it was completely unrelated. Some folks at Google brought me in down the street. I like to say in Mountain View, there are two major institutions, Google and the Khan Academy. The, uh, <laughs> they don't laugh quite when I say it. But, but uh, they, 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 they asked me, what would you do with $2 million? And, and I said, is this in, in the education context or an open question? Because it's very, very <laughs> But, but it, they clarified it. And, and I told them the same thing. Let's build a real virtual school for the world. So uh, literally about a year ago, they both agreed to do it. And we were off and running. We, we got office space, started hiring people, started hi hiring a team. And this is what we're working on. This is our knowledge map. Literally start someone at one plus one and they keep progressing. They keep moving on as they master concepts. No more of this reality where you, we give you a math exam and you get 80% right, it's a C or a B depending where you are, and then we tell you to move to the next concept. And, you know, I say that's analogous, imagine if we were building a house and the inspector says that the foundation is 80% sound, you're like, well, that's good enough, let's build a first floor. <laughs> right on. Uh, and this is what the, one of these exercises actually look like. This is one for calculus. And right now, the videos go much broader. There's 2,800 videos that go into biology and chemistry. You saw some of them earlier. Right now, we're, we're trying to cover K through 12 math in a deep way with the exercises. And we'll, we'll be actually done K through calculus by the end of this year, and then we're gonna branch off into physics and chemistry and biology, so that really anyone can start from that beginning point and get to wherever they need to at their own pace. And there, the videos are integrated, and they're really there to complement the, the, so if you don't know how to do it, you have the videos there. This is just what another, another one of the modules looks like right over here. This next slide. I don't know if it's a, uh, fast forward to, this is what another one of the modules looks like just so you have an idea here. And something interesting happened right when we got our funding. We uh, uh, literally, November of last year, uh, we got a local school district who said, wait, we heard about this. What would you do if you could do anything with the fifth grade class? And we told them exactly that. We'd have every student working at their own pace, mastering concepts before moving on, not forcing kids ahead when they're not ready, but also not holding kids back when they're ready to progress. And they said, oh, this is very interesting, differentiated learning. What would the teacher do? And we said, look, the teacher, a one-size-fits-all lecture is not good for anyone, including the teacher. The ideal role is give the teacher with as much data as they can, because every time a student interacts with this, we're collecting data, and let the teacher know who needs help so that the teacher can do one-on-one -on -one interactions. What we said, you know, the important ratio isn't student-to-teacher ratio. That is important, but the more important ratio is student-to-valuable time with the teacher ratio, or even student-to-valuable time with the, with the teacher and their peers ratio. And uh, they kind of nodded. We didn't think they would take it seriously, but two days later, they said, can we start in two weeks? And so we started a pilot in Los Altos. This is the dashboard that one of their teachers, this is actually one of the dashboards from a few months ago. Each row here is a student, and the, the teacher gets this in real time. Each column here is one of those concepts that you saw on that knowledge map. And the paradigm is green, the student's already mastered the concept. Blue means they're working on it, but no need for, for worry. 
And then red means they're stuck. They've done a lot, they've watched the video, they've done other things, but they need help. And so the model is now the teacher can say, hey, I'm gonna go next to that student right over there and work on exponents three with them. Do that same one-on-one -on -one that I had with Nadia. Or even better, why don't I get one of those other students who've already mastered exponents three, why don't I have them be the first line of attack? One, sometimes they know the concept better or they, they know the misunderstanding of their peer. And we, I mean, we know when you teach something, you just learn it at a much deeper level than when you just learn it, learn it the first time. And we wanted to arm the teachers with as much data as possible. So these are some of the reports that they get. This tells what the, teacher's been, what the student's been working on over the last month or two months to, between videos, exercises, other types of achievements, what they've been focused on between videos and exercises. Can drill in and get a problem by problem, what exactly they did. You can even see what choices the student did before or after. So when the, when the teacher goes next to the student, they're armed with as much data as possible. They frankly have the data that a lot of y'all had that I had when I, when I was in, you know, when I was at the, in the investment world or, or that markers have or that web people have. We, we want to arm teachers with that same data. Now this dashboard, it, it gives a, a view of, of just where every student is in the class, and that's interesting by itself. Horizontal axis is is days in the class, vertical axis is modules completed, but it tells a very interesting narrative. Because every class that we started with, there's a group of students, as you would expect, that race ahead, and a group of students who fall behind. And we're used to saying, oh, these are the advanced gifted students, these are the slow students, remedial students. But what we're finding is, is if you let every student work at their own pace, and this blue is one of those initially below average students, and you let them build their foundations, 100% mastery, and then really focus on things, some of these slow students just rocket ahead. And we're finding week after week after week, the same student that six months ago, six weeks ago, six days ago, you thought were slow or below average, all of a sudden is now the best student in the class. And we're seeing that over and over and over again. So the, the one, the, the, oh, the, 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 um, the one, I think, misconception sometimes when you talk about technology in the classroom is, oh, it's gonna create this like Vulcan Borg reality of like, you know, kids just, you know, doing, and, and what we're saying is the exact opposite. I already talked about the student to time with the teacher ratio. We think it's making the classroom more interactive, more human, more engaging. And just to give a kind of a sense of the energy level, I'll show you this little piece. From Mountain View, California, NBC's Kristen Welker has our story tonight. What makes fifth graders cheer? Would you believe math? Yes. I'm starting to really like math now. These kids are learning with the help of Khan Academy, an online school. You got it right. Good job. Videos that are interactive and fun, explaining difficult concepts in a conversational way. So I'll tell you one interesting story that happened out of that story. The, the reporter saw a little fifth grader doing trigonometry, which is normally taught 10th, 11th grade. And she sits next to her and she says, do you think this is fifth grade math? And the girl got a very mischievous grin on her face and she goes, no, I think it's sixth grade. <laughs> She's in for a pleasant surprise. But it wasn't just anecdotal, it wasn't just the energy level. This is actually data we saw from the seventh grade classes that we're using and these were actually remedial math classes. And there's a lot in this, but just a summary, entering the class 23% were at grade level, after six months 41% were. But the really powerful story here is 6% of this remedial math class were now advanced. They'd actually leapfrogged ahead of students who were not placed in the remedial math class because we allowed them to work at their own pace and, and really build their foundations. So the last thing I'm gonna leave you with is just a video from a, a guy that we just used our stuff and sent us this video. And it kind of speaks for itself. It's really a testimony for what people can achieve if you just give them, give them the tools to do it. My name is Mark Halberstadt. Growing up, uh, I was really always a C student. I, I think I was really pretty much always pretty pitiful in school. I don't think I've ever gotten higher than a B plus in any math class ever, uh, particularly. I pretty much thought that the only thing I was good enough to do in college was major in music. And I went off and I uh, got a music degree in saxophone. But I, I sort of almost felt that it was more I was getting it because I was terrible at everything else. Kind of worked as a saxophone player for a few years. Really what I wanted to do was uh, do electrical engineering. And the last thing that I remember completely not getting was trig identities. So I went to YouTube and I did a search for trig identities and the Khan Academy was the first thing that popped up. Watched a bunch of videos in the trig playlist to kind of get caught up to speed. I watched all the videos in the calculus playlist. I watched all the videos in the physics playlist. Watched a bunch of videos on 
dividing decimals and even uh, on a subtraction by borrowing. I watched uh, a lot of videos on, on arithmetic. That was in 2007. I did that uh, until the fall of 2010. And in the fall 2010, I, uh, I took a leap and I decided to go uh, go back to school and went to uh, Temple University, majored in electrical engineering, getting a second bachelor's. And keep in mind, I, I don't think I've ever gotten above a B plus in math classes, and I was really a straight C student growing up. And I just finished this year, first year back in college, I got a 4.0 GPA for the entire year. I got perfect scores on both of my calc final exams and also on my chemistry final exam. I ended uh, calculus, chemistry, both calculus classes, Calc 1 and 2, and chemistry with an average higher than 100%. I, there are some Khan Academy videos that I probably listen to the same concept over 20 or 30 times. And there is no tutor in the world I could have paid to have sat next to me and repeated the same thing over 20 or 30 times without at least them getting a little bit judgmental or at least them getting, thinking like, oh, well, this guy really is never going to get this concept and he should just give up. Where the understanding really happened was watching those videos and, and also working through the Khan Academy software and everything. The impact for me in my life, I, I really see it growing exponentially over the next 20 or 30 years. So, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Terrific. Saul Khan, wait, Saul, don't go away yet. I want to ask you a question. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't go yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, there's so much that's exciting about this, and it's a confluence of technology, and also you happen to be a terrific teacher, so it's very nice. Um, to my mind, one of the most exciting parts about this is not just the kids in Mountain View, California, but the kids anywhere in the world. It's the democratization of education. And I'm curious how you see this playing out over the global playing field over the next 10 years and whether that will replace traditional education or change the landscape of it. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, so we are translating the video content into, we're actually, we've already a lot of headway in Portuguese, Spanish, and Bengali, and we're doing another 12 languages on top of that we we're hoping to roll out in the next, and you know, it doesn't have to be, you don't even have to have internet accessibility, you could get it on a thumb drive, you could get it on a DVD, but we do think it's a game changer, because as valuable as it is for Los Altos or Mountain View, it's that much more valuable in the inner city where we, we've started to do some pilots in Oakland, there's some bright kids, fundamentally bright kids, they're in an algebra class, but they have deficiencies in arithmetic. And even if they're fundamentally bright, and even if they have the best teacher on the planet, there's no way to address those deficiencies. And it's even more important if you go to rural Africa or rural India, where you might not have teachers, kids have other obligations, now they can learn at their own pace. So what we're saying is, if a student has nothing, if they don't have a physical environment, we hope to, and we're, we, we're just in the early stages, we hope to keep improving so we can pro provide them a really strong education. But if they have a physical experience, we want to supercharge that. And that's what we think we're doing in, in, in some of our pilots. Congratulations on the success of your project. Thank you. Thank you.